okay, maybe that Mythbusters explosion of the water tank was a bit exaggerated of how this went down. But this is a camper water tank that one of the local people around here asked me if I could repair. I told them, well, I really don't know if I can repair it, but I'll damn sure try. And if it fails, don't pay me. If it lasts, well, then you can pay me. So what we're gonna do today is try to figure this out. I'm in Bob's shop that he so generously let me use. But first, just like with any good aluminum project, I need to clean the surface, which means acetone and a stainless steel wire brush. But first things first, I think this thing has got a bunch of crap in it still because when I move it, it makes some jiggling noises, kind of like a maraca. maraca, maraca, maraca. But uh, so let's see what the hell is in this thing. It doesn't look good. Hmm. Hmm. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, kids. It's just calcium that came out of the water tank. And drugs are bad, okay? All right. I mean, unless you do the right drugs. Anyway, so all that calcium that came out of this thing definitely does not give me the warm and fuzzies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do my best, just like I always do. They say you should wear gloves with acetone, but I watch my wife basically take a bath in this stuff every time she strips her nail polish, so I think I'll be okay. That doesn't mean you shouldn't wear gloves. Say hello to my little friend. I firmly believe that no matter what material you're welding, you should grind the crack all the way out and get to brand new material. If you have a different opinion, leave it in the comments below. So obviously I'm using a cutoff wheel that's brand new. It's not an exclusive to aluminum cutoff wheel. A lot of guys are real sticklers for that. I just don't believe the hype. Um, they say there's a difference in the material. Again, I've used both exclusive cutoff wheels for aluminum. I've used non-exclusive ones that are just general purpose cutoff wheels. And I've seen no difference in the results. But again, this is how I did it. This is not how to do it. So this is just how I'm going to put this thing back together. I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, Anthony, you shouldn't do that kind of repair on a pressurized vessel. Blah, 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 blah. Listen, I'm probably going to end up doing this fucking thing for free. So go fuck yourself. these perf flap and brillo pad combination discs they're great for polishing they're really just great overall discs for a lot of things i'm definitely misusing the shit out of it on this project but that's okay i mean it's my disc so and they're not sponsoring me or anything so but uh perf if you want to sponsor me holler all right and now one more time i'm just going to go over it with some more acetone try not to get any of the pieces of the I like these blue shop rags over a rag, like a regular cloth rag, because I find the cloth rag likes to get hung up in the material. Right. So you can see, I mean, there's still quite a bit of, of stuff on there. All right, so let's figure out how we're gonna get this back into shape, because I think I'm just gonna end up smacking it with a hammer.
All right. What I'm gonna do is because this half seems to be pretty much right. I just need to, I think, stick a cutoff wheel in here and open this back up and then re, re acetone and re flap this this here. Um, I think what I need to do is I'm gonna weld from here to here and then I'm going to fix the hammer this back down and then weld from here to here and then we're gonna fix everything else that I see on this thing. cutoff wheel down this way and I don't know if you, the camera's going to pick it up but there's a little bit of porosity in this dude's weld along the side. Subscribe! Um, part of me is thinking I should almost cut that whole weld out um, but this has been repaired several times this tank I know that much. Okay, so like I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and weld this section up to here, and then I'm going to finish this side out. I may even do these in the meantime, and then maybe even our whole long weld we got going on over here. But I'm gonna go ahead and acetone this thing one more time. As any halfway decent aluminum guy knows, you should always acetone down your aluminum welding rod. Again, it's gonna up your chances of not having porosity in your weld and just give you a better, cleaner weld. Um, and I'll show you why. So you see all that shit was on the outside of this rod and could have been in our weld puddle if I wasn't as diligent as I am with cleaning. So if you're welding aluminum, especially something that's gonna be pressurized, clean everything. Well, if you're using an inverter machine, I do prefer a purple rare earth E3 tungsten. It just for me works better. Um, you want to make sure that there's no cracks in your tungsten from the previous time you used it, which in my case there was, so I had to grind a little bit of this thing off. You don't want to break it because what will happen is you'll create new cracks. And then uh, just go ahead and grind it to a dull point. Um, it's not like a traditional machine where you grind it, where you just leave it flat and let it ball up on its own. This thing usually will not ball up too good. So just go ahead and get yourself a dull point. All right, so over here at my machine, we're gonna go ahead and flip it on. Wait for it to come on. And it looks like we're at about 100 amps. That's probably a little too little. It's on AC, let's pop it up to 125. Um, 40 hertz, and then your cleaning percentage. Um, I think 25% uh, is, is about good. This shouldn't be too bad, but let's go ahead and see how that works out. And if it doesn't, we'll readjust the machine, no big deal. So there's definitely a lot of shit coming up in this thing. You can see we're getting it to keyhole pretty good, so that looks good to me. Um, I'm probably a little too hot, keyholing a little bit too much. But as you can see, there is just a ton of shit coming out from the back of this weld, and there's not a whole lot I can do. If I was back in Florida, what I would do with this thing is I would probably fill it up with some sort of media and let it tumble for a while. You know, I don't know how I would do that, but I would try, probably try to figure something out like that. But here I have limited resources. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire wheel this out, and I'm going to try to get the best weld that I can get. And like I said, if this doesn't work, it's gonna be free. So whatever, no harm, no foul. What we have so far is looking pretty good. 
um, when I heat it up right here, a new crack opened up right in the seam. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish this repair and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grind this out. Because it looks to me, whoever previously repaired it did not get a full penetrating weld, which is vital on a pressurized uh, vessel like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead, grind that out, but first I need to finish this weld. It should move a little easier now that it's hot. So I'm just gonna do a little tap -a -rooney. She's almost back in, she's almost back in shape. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. She's about round again. So let's give her a weld. I need Paul Brown to come film my welding sequences. So if you're watching this, Paul, come film me while I weld, bud. Come on. So my main weld there looks pretty all right. Right here, you can see where I was just a little too hot and I had to work the pedal, fill it in with filler and then move on. So there's probably a bit of a drip in there. It shouldn't affect anything, it should be okay. But it's like, it's very strange because it's like this tank is really thin right here and right in these areas. It's a lot thinner than in the center and especially around the corners. So that's peculiar, I've never dealt with anything like that. But now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grind this out because as you can see, the old weld that whoever last tried to fix this thing did not fully penetrate. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grind this out, all of this, probably till, probably till there, because this looks like the factory weld, which isn't that hot looking either. And we'll go ahead, grind that out, and then we'll go ahead and weld it up. So now that I've went ahead and I got this thing all prepped out again, I'm gonna acetone it. Yes, again. The reason I keep doing that is because frankly, it's better to be safe than to be sorry. And acetoning your joints after you prep them, before you prep them, and even sometimes during welding is just a cheap insurance policy. I'm not even really sure if welding uphill in this application matters, but I did it anyway, just in case. You'll notice I switched to my 1611 MIG glove from Black Stallion, and that's because it has a drag patch and I was burning my hand. I'm gonna step up a filler rod size because it's like I'm having to jam like a quarter inch of rod in there each time I'm moving. So we'll step it up a size.
looks good. It's looking pretty freaking good, man. But, while we were welding, a couple other cracks showed themselves. So, I'm gonna keep tracing cracks on this thing. We got one more, two more cracks. We got a pretty solid weld, but as you can see, something I didn't notice before, that crack showed its head when I started welding, and that crack showed its head when I was welding. So we'll grind those out and fix those as well. And I may actually run another pass um, from, this all looks pretty good in here, right there. We have a little spot where something happened, a little dimple. This is a good deep penetrating weld. Probably The weld is probably thicker than the material itself. All right, I've got my Sharpie here and I'm going to identify the cracks. And I'm gonna give it a once over. I'm gonna hit this with the wire wheel real quick before I do anything else. Repair, if I say so myself. I'm gonna bring this over to the customer and hopefully he lets me get him on camera. All right, I'll see you over there.